everyone, Kyle Erickson here with WWDC just wrapping up and Apple releasing a whole bunch of software. I've had the chance to check out the latest version of iPad OS, iPad OS 15. This is the developer beta that was just released and we should see a public beta available sometime in the next month or so. Now there are a whole bunch of features in here that I'm really excited about with iPad OS 15. Some that I was able to play around with for this video and some that I wasn't. So I'll be going over what I can actually touch right now, but I do want to touch on some of the stuff that's coming down the pipe as well, just so you can keep an eye out for it. There was really a ton of updates for iPad this year. So I won't go over everything because this video would probably be incredibly long. So I'm just going to go over my top seven features for iPad OS this year. All right, let's kick things off talking about Safari. Immediately when you open it up, it looks a little bit less like Safari on iOS and a lot more like a desktop browser, which I think makes sense because if you're viewing websites on iPads these days, I'd say more often than not, you're expecting things to display more as a desktop site than you would a mobile one. So the browser UI should probably mirror that expectation as well. The UI for the most part is completely redone. The things that I immediately noticed is the tabs at the top. Whatever active tab you're on is also the address bar. And it's got a little bit of a different look on the actual tabs. If you've got enough tabs open, you can swipe through the tabs by swiping left and right, which is also new. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier to scan and scroll through. Another new feature is tab grouping. Uh, if you're like me and you have times where you're researching a topic, you're online shopping or whatever it is and you've got all these tabs open but you don't necessarily want to close or lose them, you can now create a tab group, leave it there, and start something completely fresh and come back to it when you need it. Also noted here, the way that Safari shows tabs when you want to see all your tabs, uh, it's more of a flat design as compared to the stacked view that we're used to seeing. And probably my favorite feature, something that's super basic that I thought should have been in Safari a long time ago, pull the refresh. As someone who came from Android, this was something that I was so used to and has just never been in Safari. So still to this day, I'll go into Safari and go to the top of the screen and pull and be like, why isn't it doing anything? What's wrong with this? Oh yeah. <laughs> You'll also be able to add extensions to Safari, similar to the way that you can in the desktop version. Moving on to widgets, they've moved over from being stuck on to the left side of the screen and behave more like iOS, where you can put them anywhere on the screen. You can also drag them on top of each other, which creates a widget stack. There are a whole bunch of new widgets available and with more selection and the new app library, you'll be able to customize what shows on your home screen and how it looks versus just having a bunch of icons. I've never really been a widgets kind of guy. I've found them to clutter things up a little bit, but there's definitely useful things in here that I think I might actually use. Just minor things that I check every day through apps that I can now just show on my home screen. But regardless of any of that, just having the flexibility of even being able to adjust things on the home screen, I think was very much needed. As I touched on very briefly, we now have an app library, just like on iOS, where you can search for apps. And it also allows us to add or remove apps and reorganize the home screen and the app pages. So now you'll be able to have full control over your icons and exactly what's being displayed and where, which will allow you to create some pretty neat screens. Again, very similar to iOS. There's also an app library shortcut in the dock for easy access, or you can reach it by swiping to the end of your app screens, very similar to iOS. I think most people were probably expecting some of those features. It was a little bit weird that Apple didn't include the app library in iPadOS 14 alongside iOS 14, but it's there now and it's something that I personally really like. Again, as someone who used Android for a really long time, the app pages always felt a little bit constrictive to me. It always felt like things like wallpapers were less effective to me and the only option you would really have is this wall of stock icons. So definitely a welcome change. I think widgets in the app library are probably more the visual changes that we see and I think you tend to notice visual things first before anything else. But 
I'd say that most of the newest features in iPad OS 15 are more about productivity. Multitasking is something that I think has really been addressed. You have a brand new ellipsis menu at the top of your apps where you can click to either turn these into split views or slide views. And I know splitting views isn't something new in itself, but this menu I find is a lot easier to deal with and is a little bit more intuitive now. I found the previous way of splitting views to be almost hidden. You really wouldn't know how to do it unless you heard about it or you looked it up. But this way just makes it a lot easier. It's really handy for any time you need to do something on one app where you need to refer to another. Probably one of the main uses for this would be things like note taking. If you're trying to learn something new, maybe using the notes app alongside a browser or a book. And speaking of notes, that's something that has also had a little bit of attention paid to it as well. Normally, if someone told me, hey, Apple just updated their note taking software, not a lot of people would be interested. Their notes, what could be exciting about that? But there is some actual really great innovation with notes in this release. The coolest thing I think here is quick notes, which I could see myself using a lot. With a stylus, you could just swipe in from the bottom right and jot things down, add links and so on. And in some apps like Safari, these notes will actually pop up when you revisit the site. If you made the note on a particular page or link, you'll of course be able to access all your quick notes from the notes app as well. You can also create smart folders with tags, which are basically just hashtags to help you group and categorize your notes, which is pretty neat. And you can share notes with mentions similar to how you would with most other online collaborative note software. These features aren't new and they've existed on other apps and platforms for a while, but I think one thing that Apple does really well is integrating them into the ecosystem and just making them easy to use and having them work well. Focus is another feature that I could really see helping productivity, especially if you get distracted by things like notifications easily. In settings, I can just go to the focus tab and I've got three profiles at the top that I can customize. One of the neat things is there's an option to share these profiles across your devices. So you could mute notifications and things like that on your iPhone as well. These are pretty customizable. You can adjust what gets shown on your home screen, depending on what profile you have selected. And you can either turn these on manually or you can schedule or trigger them automatically. When you schedule them automatically, they can either be scheduled for a specific time, a specific location, or if you're accessing a specific app. They also have something called smart activation, which is supposed to automatically adjust based on relevant times throughout the day and other things like location and app usage. I'm not too familiar with it, so I'm not sure if it's something that will end up working really well for people or if it's something that people might find a little bit annoying. In any case, I really like the idea of having a focused home screen and being able to lock down notifications a little bit more. It would be nice to have a few more profiles available or the ability to create custom ones, but this is a really good start. There are a few cool little features with AI in here that I think also already exist in Android, but I do think Apple has done them a little bit better. One of those is live text where you can take a picture and head into your Photos app where you can just select text like you would if you were viewing a web page or a text document. This is obviously really handy for anyone who might be in a classroom copying or taking notes or anything like that. Being able to digitize all your written notes and also if you're just looking to grab a phone number or an address. I've tested it out a little bit and it seems like as long as your writing is legible, it seems like it works really well. You also have visual lookup that will show you more information on things about things in your photos, whether it be animals, objects, and scenes. I've just tested this out a little bit with my cat. Reason being, on some Android phones, my cat shows up a lot of the time as a panda. <laughs> but good news, we're only getting a cat on here. That side of things seems to work really well, and it's really nice that it's built into photos and into Spotlight Search, which, small thing that I have noticed, Spotlight search can now be accessed on the lock screen as well. Again, I just find that Apple has done a little bit better job of integrating these features and they seem to work a little bit better. 
And we're only on the developer beta version right now, so hopefully that improves even more in the next few months. There are a whole bunch of features in here that I'm really excited to try out, but a lot of them either require other people to test out, something like SharePlay where you'll be able to watch things like videos and shows with other people. Probably not something that I'm going to use much, but still really neat. There's a bunch of new stuff with maps, like an interactive globe, new driving features, and so on, but I think those things are more conducive to phones more than they are tablets. So I don't think that's something that most iPad users will dive into too much. Two features that I am most excited to try out that I haven't got to cover in this video are Universal Control and the newest version of Swift Playgrounds. Universal Control actually allows you to drag something from your iPad over to your MacBook seamlessly. And I could totally see myself using this. I already think that Sidecar is an amazing feature for the iPad. I just don't have my MacBook set up to do this, but it's definitely something that I like to cover in another video. With Swift Playgrounds 4, we're now actually able to build apps on the iPad and submit them to the App Store. Now, I don't know how much I would use this over Xcode on desktop, but I'm just really excited to see the iPad kind of making the shift from being something that's more leisure oriented into something that can be used professionally as well. Uh, I currently only have access to Swift Playgrounds 3.4, so right now it doesn't look like I can test it out. I'm really just touching on some of the features that are coming out for iPad OS 15, but there's still a lot more out there. And I think one thing that we should look out for is Apple starting to catch up with Android and Google for things like maps and AI features. Also with a lot of these features, we're likely to see the ecosystem even more seamless. And that's really Apple's bread and butter when it comes to features. Uh, I'd love to know what everyone else's favorite features are in this version of iPad OS. What are you looking forward to? And is there anything that you think that they missed in this release? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. If you want to see more tech related content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to get notified anytime that I release new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.